Hello, this is Arturo Ortiz from Splendid Truth. In the last two videos, I explained how number one, Sola Scriptura is not historical, and number two, that it is not biblical. In the last video, I will apply a litmus test to Sola Scriptura by asking two particular related questions. Number one, has Sola Scriptura worked historically? And number two, has it led to unity and doctrinal consistencies? If Sola Scriptura is a true biblical principle, then it must naturally carry into practice. This is because God, as 1 Corinthians 14.33 states, is not the author of confusion. It must likewise be consistent with the intent of Jesus, and that it must lead to one single unified church rather than a collection of churches or assemblies. It should first be noted that Jesus did in fact start one church. This church is his own mystical body, which has the authority to interpret under the guidance of the Holy Spirit in regards to faith and doctrine. This can be seen, for example, in Matthew 16, Matthew 18, and various other passages. Furthermore, Jesus prays in John 17, 11, 21 to 23 to the Father that the church may be one just as you and I are one. Furthermore, St. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 3.15 that the church is the pillar and bulwark ground of the truth. Similarly, St. Paul furthermore states in 1 Corinthians 1.10, I appeal to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no dissensions amongst you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Similarly, Paul also writes to the Romans 16.17 about avoiding those who create dissensions and difficulties in opposition to the doctrine which you have been taught. In Acts 3.32, we are told that the church was of one heart and one soul. Lastly, in John 10.16, Jesus tells us that there should be one flock and one shepherd. How has Sola Scriptura squared with this? To answer these questions, let us first ask ourselves, namely, how many Protestant churches exist which all claim Sola Scriptura, but which also have, amongst other things, conflicting doctrinal beliefs about a variety of matters and which have their own church or ecclesial structure? The question of exactly what the number of Protestant churches currently in existence is a hot debate. Let us be conservative and use David Barrett's Oxford World Christian Encyclopedia, which is seen as perhaps the most authoritative, which puts about eight or 9,000 different Protestant sects or churches. In reality, the size of the number of Protestant churches doesn't really matter. The reason for this is specifically that in the grand scheme of things, even if it was just two churches with conflicting doctrinal beliefs, that is, in essence, one too many, even one too many churches would go contrary to the message of the gospel of truth and unity. Even more problematic, as stated above, is that almost all of these churches have various conflicting doctrinal beliefs, yet they all claim sola scriptura. These churches range widely amongst basic doctrinal things such as baptism, communion, salvation, grace, the hierarchical nature of the church such as the priesthood, and a host of various other things. Lutherans, for example, believe in consubstantiation, namely the belief that Jesus is present in the bread and wine, but in such a way in which the presence of Jesus is mixed with the bread and the wine. This is in large contrast, for example, to the Baptists, who simply believe that the bread and wine to be merely symbolic, or the Anglicans who are divided as to whether it is a real or symbolic presence, depending on if you are high or low church or so-called Anglo-Catholic. In regard to baptism, Presbyterians believe in infant baptism and believe that it is non-regenerative. Lutherans believe in infant baptism and that it is regenerative. Many evangelical and fundamentalists neither practice or believe in infant baptism, nor do they believe that baptism is regenerative. 
So there are many more instances of doctrinal differences amongst Protestants and adherents of Sola Scriptura. The point to make, though, is that amongst many Protestant traditions that claim Sola Scriptura as a biblical principle, many of these same churches nevertheless reach various theological and doctrinal conclusions, yet they all appeal to Scripture alone based on their own private interpretation. Once again, has it not been stated that God is not the author of confusion? I will finish off this video by quoting one of the key passages of Cardinal James Gibbons, author of his famous book, Faith of Her Fathers. As he put the practical logical effects of Sola Scriptura most eloquently, he states, quote, Of what use of you is the objective infallibility of the Bible without an infallible interpreter? Do you not reduce God's words to a bundle of contradictions like the leaves of the Sibyl, which gave forth answers suited to the wishes of every inquirer? Cardinal Gibbons continues, of the hundred and more Christian sects now currently in existence, in this country does not each take the Bible as its standard of authority and does not each member draw from it a meaning entirely different from that of his neighbor? Now in the mind of God, the scriptures can have but one meaning. Is not this variety of interpretations the bitter fruit of your principle and infallible Bible is enough for me? And does it not proclaim the absolute necessity of some authorized and unerring interpreter? Cardinal Gibbons finishes by stating the following. Here on the contrary is the written constitution of my church, the Catholic Church. But I have appointed over it a supreme tribunal in the person of one to whom I have given the keys of the kingdom of heaven, who will preserve that constitution inviolate and will not permit it to be torn into shreds by the conflicting opinion of men, and thus my children will be one as I and the Father are one. End quote. I hope this short video series has explained why Sola Scriptura is false from three different perspectives, namely the perspective of history, of scripture, and its workability. Please subscribe so that you can keep up with new content. God bless. Have a great day.